PhotoFrame 4.5 using the clipping mask mode. Hi, in this tutorial we're going to talk about one of the new features in PhotoFrame 4.5. We're actually going to show you how to create a layout page using two of the new features. I'm going to go ahead and start out with this document. All I've done is just created a new document that was a white letter size piece of paper. And on top of that I just drug in this other image right here. Let's just go ahead, select that image, and open up PhotoFrame. The first new thing I want to show you is how to actually put a background underneath an image. So if you're working on a page layout like this, we can actually put a new background behind the layer that we selected in Photoshop. We're going to start here in the library inside of PhotoFrame. I'm going to go to Backgrounds, and I'm just going to select that background and put behind it. I'm just going to go to the Composite category and use one of the pre-built ones. Find the one you want, select it, and select Add Frame. Now by default, it's going to put that new background on top of your image, but just like you would in Photoshop, you can reorder things inside of the frame stack. So just select that background and just drag it underneath your image. There we go. So now we've actually positioned the background underneath the target layer in Photoshop. The second new feature I want to show you is a new output option called Apply as a Clipping Mask. And if we go over to our Options palette and we select the Apply as a Clipping Mask option, it's going to allow us to add a clipping mask as a new layer that will actually visually tear the edge of our target image. It works kind of like a layer mask, but it's a little bit more flexible way of working. You can actually resize an image inside of a clipping mask without affecting the actual shape like you would with a layer mask. Just go ahead and open up the library and let's pick the edge that we want to use to tear it with. I'm going to use one of the new frames in the Guru category that comes from NAP, the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. They've got all sorts of cool edges in here. They've got one I really like right here, number 7, that looks like little swirly lines. I'm just going to select to add that as a frame. There we go. Now we don't see anything yet because the frame is actually larger than our image, but we can fix that just by using the Move tool to move it into the edge of our image. And we can also rotate it to fit our image as well. Let's go ahead and rotate that around a little bit. There we go. And then adjust it up or down until we get just the area that we want. We want it to change the entire edge of our image. There we go. I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit so we can take a little closer look. That's looking better, but it's actually a little too hard of an edge. So I'm going to add a little bit of a blur to it. By going to our background palette, we can actually increase the blur, which will soften it and give us a little bit easier transition. Maybe something around 4 or 5 pixels. Oop, that's maybe a little too high. Let's try more like 2 or 3. There we go. That just softens that transition a little bit. When everything's ready to be applied, make sure the option is set to apply as a clipping mask and press the apply button. There we go. And if we look at our layer stack, you can see on top of it is our original image, and underneath it is the clipping mask. Let me just show you what those look like on their own. I'm just going to turn off my upper layer so you can see the frame layer that's come back as a clipping mask. It's just a solid, opaque shape. And then by using a clipping mask feature in Photoshop, we can actually clip our target layer to it. The great thing about this is our original image is left untouched. We can edit and manipulate it without it actually affecting anything in the clipping mask. I'm just going to unbind those two for a second so you can see how it's still the entire original target layer is there. Let's just clip those back together. There we go. And one of the fun things about those clipping masks is I can reposition my image inside of it just using the Move tool. So I can change it and you'll see how it continues to clip it no matter how I move it around. I could even change the size using the free transform tool if I want to. And it will still maintain the original size and shape of the area. There we go, just like that. Clipping masks are a really versatile way to change the edge of your image inside of Photoshop. And now that you can apply them directly through PhotoFrame, the two work great hand-in-hand -hand for creating album layouts like this one.